I've been doing this a lot lately and mainly as a way to kind of make a track less boring, I guess. I, that sounds kind of bad because it's not necessarily that the track is boring. And I don't want to say spice up a track either because that's kind of cheesy to say, I guess. Anyway, I've been using external effects, for example, the Zen Delay or the CXM to um, add movement. There we are. That's what I'm looking for. Add movement and character and just a vibe to a track, right? Because if you have a very simple, basic loop, it can get a bit monotonous, especially in my realm, which is more of the house music side of things. I've kind of been branching out a little bit here and there, but sticking with house for this video. And I wanted to kind of just demonstrate how I do it here with this because I this is demonstration purposes only. This song is whack as F. And um, yeah, but basically, here, let's kind of just take an example and listen as to how I can approach this or how you can approach this as well when using either Ableton or Logic or whatever, because there's a ton of different ways to do this. And with Ableton, it does get kind of annoying when you start using external instrument stuff and external um, effect stuff because you have to bounce in real time. But there's a couple ways-ish around that, not really, but uh, here's the cheesy cheese ball track. Beyond basic, right? For this example, we're just turn the bass off as well. Okay, so what we're really listening to is this JV1080. And what I've done here is I've taken this external instrument rack thing. And basically all that this is, is if I go here and I go audio effects, we'll say, uh, oh man, Ableton Live changed everything. Effects, uh, utilities, there it is, audio, external, audio effect. You drag this on, you're sending audio to where? I wanna send it to output five and I wanna take audio from input two. Very simple, I got my patch bay here. I grab two cables and on my patch bay, hopefully you can see that this one's labeled as five, which is basically just the output of my audio interface. So I can say, boom, five. Now let's go into the Zen delay, easy peasy, and out of the Zen delay, back into my interface on two. Uh, the reason I chose two, not necessarily um, where the JV1080 is, is because if I chose where the JV1080 is, you would be overwriting the incoming signal, so you would technically cancel it out, I think. But not only that, this Claret Apri, um, what I thought was a con of having the inputs one and two on the front, it's actually kind of easy to just patch into there. So, done. I can go ahead and erase this. And uh, I'm gonna just set the same settings I had on that one. So we'll just say plus two. This is kind of your gain as to how much you're sending to the pedals. So some guitar pedals will clip really easily. Use this to bring it down. The Zen Delay is actually pretty decent at this. So let's play it now. Cool, let me turn this on. Boom, what a vibe. Ah, I already hear the way I want this track to come in. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this section, duplicate this. I promise I'm trying to not get too carried away. I'm gonna move this over here, and then, how do I wanna do this? Um, I'm already getting carried away. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, let me delete this, delete this, delete this. Okay, um, yeah, you could live there. So then, from that part, it's gonna go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So. What I've done is I set this up as an external instrument rack here within the channel of the JV1080. And this doesn't have to be, um, you can ignore, uh, the reason I'm closing these is to mainly focus on just this. Going into geezer mode. Let's see, we'll turn this up even bigger. So all I wanna focus in is on this external audio rack. And similar to when I mentioned in the ERM versus that piece of garbage video, um, if you have an audio track set to off, it will avoid all latency. And what I wanna do here is take audio from input two and take that avoids all latency with a grain of salt because that was a bold statement and I am gonna get roasted for that one. So all I'm doing now is I'm record arming this track, which is taking the affected signal of this track into here. Another way you can do it as well is go ahead and put this. You can say take audio from JV1080, but the way that I've been doing it is just straight in like this. 
So if I go back and I hit record, all I'm gonna start doing now is I'm recording the JV1080 with this effect on it. Clipping. Okay, so this is one way to do it. The somewhat, I guess, downside of this is that you have the dry and the wet signal recorded. You cannot mix between the two, it is printed. So if I were to play this back now, it would sound kind of phasey or just weird because we're listening to this track, which is the true JV1080, and the recorded version with effects on it. So if we listen to them together, listen to this, it's gonna sound crazy. Oh, hold on, I also have this uh, external effect still going. Here there's like a little bit of a crum, crum, crum. That's because there's two signals playing at once. So the other way, which is really fun to do this, is using your sends. So here I have this reverb send. I'll go ahead and delete this. And if for whatever reason your um, Ableton doesn't have the send and returns, I think it's this R. Yeah, so this R here is going to show your returns. And then you just want to go to create and insert return track. So now I've done that, we've done C, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete A, delete B. So we just have A, and I'm gonna call this Zen Delay. A Zen Delay, nice. And I'm gonna just go ahead and take this external audio effects and put it onto this track. So now what this has done is we no longer hear it here directly on the JV1080, but this, uh, where is it? If I open this up a little bit, this here is our sends. And if we are in this mode, the session mode, you can see our send here. Send A, which is A here, is our Zen delay. Important, turn the wet of whatever effects you are using to full wet, the dry wet level to full wet. You don't want it half and half because you're gonna run into that same phasey issue that we just had a second ago. So this here, if I press play now, I can start turning this up. And then watch. Oh, of course, and then you should uh, probably turn it on as well. There we go. Oh, and then start from the beginning. Come on, noob. There it is. Mm. So then, then, don't exp... Well, do whatever you want to do. What I prefer to do is to not just set it and forget it. I want to spice up my track. So that same audio track that was listening to input two, it's still listening to input two, so it's going to be recording the dry only signal. Or we can say record the, the return track, and this will handle the latency stuff, I hope. So let's see. We'll go here, hit record, see what we get. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we want. Just the affected signal. So while Housemaster Flex over there finishes up this recording session, it kind of brought to mind a class I've been taking on today's video sponsor, Skillshare. In case you're not familiar, Skillshare is an online platform that has thousands of classes on creativity, productivity, business, design, whatever you want to take, and they actually have a ton of music classes as well. And the class I'm talking about is Learn How to Mix and Master by Young Guru. This is probably the most misunderstood technique in modern recording. What is a compressor? What's great about this class is that they cover all the basics from organizing the mix all the way up into getting a nice tonal balance and getting your track ready to be mastered. And you guessed it, Young Guru also has a mastering class. So at the super affordable price of less than 10 bucks a month, you can learn how to mix your tracks, master your tracks, start a business, learn how to draw, learn how to write better, whatever you want to do. And the great thing too is since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to use the link in the description below will get a free trial membership to Skillshare Premium. All right, let's get back to the music. And of course you kind of mess around and get get used to when things clip and how and why. There's a billion ways to gain stage this thing wrong because you have the gain right there. 
you have this gain in here you got this the in output gain input gain gain on the the pedal and then the gain on your interface so you kind of have to teeter-totter around and figure this whole thing out but now if i were to just solo this and turn our send off of the jb1080 we listen to this back we just have the affected signal and this is kind of cool i'm gonna give you a cheat code real quick so what this helps me do is i can then create variations of this track get out of your info window and what's cool with this is by creating different variations of my track, it's all kind of in the same realm. So say, for example, before the breakdown, I didn't want this to play anymore. I can still have like the vibe of, the, uh, of those little stabs coming in because the effects are still there. So watch. Of course, you would make this sound a lot nicer, but it's an idea, right? Or we can do something weird. What does that sound like layered under this thing? Oh, that's kind of cool. We'll keep that going, avoid that clip part. And then let me go into here, zoom into this. So all I'm going to do here is actually select this section, loop it, and drag it out. But then change it up weirdly, see if I can find another. Oh, that's cool. Okay, cool. And then I'll just do that again. And then of course I need to add a uh, side chain to this. Compressor, boom, bam, side chain, input from, drum rack, we'll go kick, ba-bow, done deal. Let's go ahead and loop that. can do weird stuff and send this back this track this audio track recorded back into that same send and flip it around and do some more delaying on the delays if that's even a thing but honestly that's kind of what I wanted to share really quick really simple because when you start kind of messing around with uh, putting a track together it can get a bit monotonous a bit boring at times so not only just having a bunch of different elements and things like that you can kind of start creating new variations but still kind of keep it within the same realm because it's really hard to make music simply I guess because it's like I'm going to keep it as little elements as possible and really work them but I often run into that issue where I take out one thing and then the whole track is gone I mean this is again demonstration purposes only please don't uh judge my culinary skills based on this little loop that we got going on here. But I mean, yeah, hopefully this is uh, helpful to you in some sort of way. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. And the other cool thing is like, say we have the, the Pro 3 here, right? I can then send the Pro 3 to that delay as well. Let me do some weird. And then I can take another audio track and then just kind of, you know, play with this one. So I can say, cool, take audio from, you guessed it, Zen delay track off, record. And then I'll just give myself a little lead time on here. still there and I'm gonna I'm not gonna hit record or I'm not gonna uh, unmute it because I want this delay to play out unaffectedly but in the actual take I'm gonna bring all this back in so I'm gonna let it fade out mm. 
Cool, so now I can unmute this. I can go ahead and take this Pro 3 section out and play that back. Oh, and of course, take this out. So it's just a fun way to resample effects. Easy, easy peasy. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Good to see you. On to 2021. It's going to be a good year. And uh, yeah, until next time, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. Oh, that actually kind of sucks. I don't like that. So I'm going to just take this tail end here. Move that over there. Get rid of that. signal back to the JV. Yeah. Well, that was kind of cool. The drums are kind of cool.